careers deciding your destiny with Dr. Cecil Stewart. Welcome to Deciding Your Destiny. I do believe you're going to be greatly encouraged today. My topic is identity and destiny. When we know who we are, it matters how we act. And when we walk in the light of God's word, we have a great advantage because we're going forward into the center of his will. And we're going to be praying later for anyone who suffers with anxiety or anyone who suffers with sickness or disease because Jesus is still a healer today. And so my topic is identity and destiny. And I hope you'll share this with friends and let us know if you're being blessed through these programs. If you have prayer requests, we'd be happy to have the prayer team here at CCN pray for us and pray for you. This is a wonderful hope builder, which is a blessing to many people. Give it over and get on. Many people suffer offense and hurts and disappointments, even in families. It happens in political life, it happens in family life and church life. But we need to give over our anxieties, our disappointments, and pray for those who hurt us. So request a copy of this, give it over, and get on. It will be an inspiration and an encouragement to you. So it's important to remember that we don't have to live in the past, but God has a big future for us. We need to upgrade our expectation because God has plans as far greater than we could ever anticipate. He blesses us by saving us and taking us from a life of waste and a life of selfishness to live the greatest life of all unto him and to know his peace and power and presence. And the scripture says, Isaiah 54, 17, no weapon formed against you shall prosper and every tongue raised against you in judgment you shall condemn. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord and the righteousness is of me, saith the Lord. So when you know that God is for you, you know that whoever is against you cannot stop you. But we need to reach out to people, even those who do offend us, and show them grace and mercy. And remember our words are powerful. We used to sing a song in the faith mission. Sing them over again to me, wonderful words of life. Words of life and beauty, teach me faith and duty. Tell it around, let it abound, wonderful words of life. Words can bring death and destruction, or words can bring life and health. Scripture says that he who wins souls is wise. So when we speak the words that Jesus gives us, it gives people a lift. I remember when I was very ill back in my early 20s, one of the portions of Scripture that really helped me when I was so depressed and suffered from tuberculosis. And in those days there was no answer. It certainly was a problem to get any treatment for that. And I remember having been told that I'd have to go to the sanatorium for at least six months. And this was way back in 1966 when we were planning to get married at that point. And I knew if I was going into the sanatorium for six months, I would not be able to go forward. But God provided a way and made a way. My sister, Isabella, took me to her home and made it possible for me to be there, not have to be put in the sanatorium. Words of life and actions of life make such a difference. I remember too, way back in the early part of my life, my mother used to keep chickens in the farmyard. We lived in a country farmyard on a farm 
and land. And as my mum was out walking across the yard, a rooster ran out of nowhere and just picked her veins. She had very big varicose veins. And it picked her vein and the blood began to spew out of her leg. And my brother Mervyn and Isabel, my sister, they took her in quickly and Isabel held her finger over the vein and tried to stop the blood from going. And they went for the doctor in Bally Bay, which was about 15 minutes away. And it was Mervyn who went and got Dr. Nolan. And he dropped everything and came out really fast and rushed and left everything, came to the house at Beach Hill in County Monaghan. And whenever he came in, he said, you've saved your mother's life, he said to Isabel, by holding your hand over this and stopping the bleeding. So when we work together, our lives are saved. She had to take that step and do her best to keep the blood from pouring out of my mother's vein. She later became a nurse. But whenever Mervyn rushed into Bally Bay, it was so good that the doctor came flying out so quickly and he told them both, you've saved your mother's life. So we all can be in the position where we save people's lives by helping them and encouraging them. I've often said, your future is seen in your daily routine. And so we need to think about how we're spending our days together. That we're living not only for ourselves, but we're living unto the Lord and blessing other people. And that's totally contrary to the way of the world. But if believers would start to do this on a daily basis to look for ways of helping and encouraging others, it would transform the community because they would see this is different. These people are not living just for themselves. They're living to help others and to, most of all, fulfill the purpose for which they were born. Every one of us have opportunities every day to lift someone up. I've often said, never look down on anyone unless you're bending over to lift them up. We want to lift people up. You remember the story of the man on the Jericho Road? He had fallen among thieves and he was wounded and left for half dead. A priest went by and looked and passed on the other side and another person went through, passed on the other side, but a good Samaritan, he went to him, poured in oil and wine and put bandages on him. And then he lifted him up and took him on his own animal or donkey. And he brought him to an inn and said, whatever else it costs, I'll pay it. So he took responsibility and I think it was Winston Churchill who said, the price of greatness is responsibility. So we take responsibility and believe that God is with us and that he enables us to do the impossible. First John 4, 4, it says, greater is he that's in us than he that's in the world. First John 5, 4, whoever's born of God overcomes and this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. And we have the great privilege of being alive on this earth in such a, a very difficult time. In the last of the last days, in fact, I do believe that we're in the very last days and Jesus is coming. And scripture says too, that in the last days, perilous time shall come. That means that going to be times when there's no way out, no solutions. We think of what's happening in Israel, what's happening in many countries today in Ukraine and Russia, and there seems to be no solution. Politicians don't know what to do. Even the 
army and police. They cannot solve it. But when we look to Jesus and put our lives in his hands, we are controlled by his love. And the Bible says that love never fails. Love overcomes. Even though we speak with the tongues of men and angels and have not love, we're like sounding brass and tinkling cymbal. So love is the greatest thing because love never fails. And this is what we are here to do on this earth. That scripture we all know so well, John 3:16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believes on him should not perish but have everlasting life. That's the most wonderful verse. Many people don't even wait to read it. For God so loved the world. He didn't just love the world but he did something. He gave his only begotten Son that whosoever doesn't matter where you're from or what nation or country, whosoever can come and be saved as soon as you repent. I remember being downtown Belfast when I was quite young. I went in a barber shop and there was a little thing on the wall opposite where I was sitting. And it said, he is no fool who gives what he cannot keep to gain what he cannot lose. What I was really saying was, you can't keep your life, so give it. Give it to serve the Lord, give it to serve others. And he's no fool who gives away his life. And he would gain a wonderful fulfilling of the call of God. And others are helped and the world has changed and the atmosphere in which we live, even in the home, when we are living to look after each other, knowing that we have the strength of God in us. We know 1 John 4.4 4 says, Greater is he that's in us, and he that's in the world. So may we live every day to honour him. I have said before, favour is manifested when opportunity and preparation meet. In other words, when we prepare ourselves like the good Samaritan was prepared on the Jericho Road, he was prepared, he had, he brought some wine and oil and bandages. So we expect when we go out to meet people. Sometimes I go out for a walk near Georgia town, up at Hazelbank. And I usually have some hope builders in my pocket. And if I meet people and they wish to receive a copy of that, Many people do, some refuse it, but most people are grateful. And the other day I was actually giving it to two people I've seen before, I don't know who they were. And they said, oh, I watch you on TV and I really enjoy your program. And that was so encouraging for me to do what I can, what I can. We only have a short time and Jesus said, Do not say there are four months and then comes the harvest. Behold, the fields are white already to harvest. And that's in John's Gospel. Do not say there's plenty of time. Time is short and eternity is sure. But we're here for a wonderful purpose to fulfill the call of God and turn people from a lost eternity well, many people are going and they don't even know it. They think that religion will get them to heaven or they think they'll live a good life. But there's only one thing can prepare you for heaven, and that is to repent and believe the gospel. And then Jesus said, this is your hour. Do not say there's plenty of time and then comes the harvest. Lift up your eyes and look for the fields are white already unto harvest. So we can be solution providers, not just problem makers, but be a solution provider. Find a way. I remember I was traveling, my wife and I years ago, up the motorway, M1 motorway in Northern Ireland, 
and I suddenly had a flat wheel and the car started wobbling everywhere and I had to pull into the emergency line and stop when I was getting out to try and see could I change the wheel. But suddenly a car pulled right in in front of me and four or five young men came round and said, can we help you? And they actually waited and jacked the car up and changed the wheel for me. And these were real ambassadors for Jesus. They were helping. They were not passing on by and too busy, but they had time to stop and help somebody in trouble. And we all know that we can help people in trouble. And Jesus said, do not let your heart be troubled, John 14. Do not be anxious about anything, Philippines says, but pray about everything. So don't think on things of a negative report. Think on things that are good, the scripture says. If there be any virtue and any praise, think on these things. We have great opportunity today, whether we live on a farm or in the city or wherever we are, there's people needing help. And we have the privilege of making a difference so they can be reached to and helped and their lives will never be the same. And once people discover that they are here on this earth to be a blessing, that will give them purpose and give them a destiny and they will go forward with new hope. So remember today, I'm speaking on destiny and identity. Identity, do you know who you are? Do you know where you're going? Jesus said, repent and believe the gospel. And when you know who you are and you come to Jesus, you become a new creature in Christ. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians, we become new people with a new nature. Yes, we still have storms, we still have situations to face, but we have the privilege of speaking to people, reaching people, 2 Corinthians 5.17 If anyone is in Christ, he's a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. There's a little hope builder which I wrote for those who look at the program. It's called, It's Not Over. And if you have problems and circumstances that's really hopeless, I want to encourage you to say it's not over because Jesus paid it all at the cross. I remember years ago we were in a, an open air outreach in Ballina Hinch in Northern Ireland, right in the center of the town of Ballina Hinch. And a young man there was Lindsay Morgan, he was asked to sing. And he got up and there was crowds of people everywhere and he started to sing. He was wounded for my transgressions. He was bruised for my iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was laid upon him and by his stripes were healed. As Isaiah 53. Look these scriptures up and study them and let them become a, a whole beacon of light to you. It'll change your life forever. And we'll be in a position to help people that we thought we couldn't help. But you are stronger than you think. And if God before you, he can be against you. I've also got a little hope builder called Accelerate. This is about running the race and reaching the goals. You remember the apostle Paul said, I don't fight as one with uncertainty. I run intending to win, 1 Corinthians 9.27. So we're in a race to reach the world and the Lord empowers us and enables us. And there's no joy like the joy of soul winning and helping other people. Because when we live to reach other people and minister to other people, we ourselves accelerate and we are blessed. And when people get these and use them, they will bring hope and faith and turn them into a person of victory. So request a copy of this, we send them to 
you're absolutely free. And if you want to contribute to the cost of buying time on television and the other expenses, we're always grateful to receive that and to put it toward the ministry. So ask for Accelerate. We also have one here. I remember speaking on this subject in Uganda. You remember Uganda was the place where Idi Amin used to rule and reign. Every morning there was new people found on the street, dead, murdered in Uganda. Idi Amin, a cruel dictator. When I spoke on this subject, turning captives into conquerors in the actual meeting for leaders and multitudes people came or thousands of people came and as the common forward they were inspired and blessed. I remember one man coming forward at the end of my talk and said could I speak to you a moment and I said certainly. He said I'm here to tell you that I have heard your word but this is the last meeting I'm ever going to come to because I cannot cope with the pressure of poverty and so many people dying and hopeless. I can't bear it anymore. And I said to him, but who called you to do this? He said, Jesus called me. I said, well, if he called you, he'd equip you and empower you. I was back later on in that same area. And he came forward and said, I want you to know I'm not the same man that I was. I've been changed. I realize that I have power through the Holy Spirit and I have a purpose. So I'm not quitting, I'm going forward. I'm rising up with new hope. And because of his commitment, others came to Christ. I remember also in one of the missions in Africa, a man called Kamlish Patne. He was a Hindu and he had no interest in God. He was in the government and had a reputation of dishonesty. And I remember, I remember I had a Presbyterian minister with me from Balamina and he was the one that counseled whenever Kamlish Patney came forward and repented. And he taught him the way of salvation and showed him repentance and he responded and received Christ and then he led 12 of his family to the Lord. When the news media heard that Cambridge Patney had come forward, they came in and immediately, because he was so well known, they wanted to talk to him. And in the papers the next morning, it was headlines from Hinduism to Christ. And the whole place was awakened from Hinduism to Christ. Then we were going to Yohora Park in Nairobi and that's where we had the huge crowd. Some people estimate it was 20,000 or so, maybe even more. But anyway, it brought about a spiritual awakening and the greatest thing is that so many came forward in the missions and gave their hearts to Christ and went forward with new hope and became victorious instead of a victim. There are victors. So you can do it because God is the same. Jesus is the same yesterday, today and forever. Hebrews 13 verse 8. He's the same yesterday, today and forever. What he's done in the past, he'll still do. He said, I am the Lord, I do not change. What Jesus did when he was on earth, he was doing through his body. That's what Jesus said to them. He said, Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. That's Mark 16. He that believes shall be saved and he that believes not shall be lost. So it's very serious. Heaven is real. Hell is real. Life is short and eternity sure. We need to realize that we have this wonderful privilege of living for Jesus. I remember also Way back when I was a small child, we lived on a farm in a place called Beach Hill, outside Valley Bay, County Monaghan. And my brother Herbie, 
he had invited friends in to hear a recording of a preacher who was a mighty man of God, Jack Cole, way back in those days. As they were listening to this recording, they suddenly heard this thud and my mother had fallen down and one of the men who was there said, she's gone. And Hervey said, no, she's not gone. And he rebuked death and said, in the name of Jesus, rise up. And my mother, who was absolutely lifeless, suddenly came back and was able to stand up. When we stand up for Jesus, yes, the enemy will try his utmost to stop us. He tried to tell us we're wasting our time. He tried to tell us it doesn't work. But we know it works. That's why the Bible says, Paul said it, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone who believes. It's not Mark 16. Everyone who believes, no favorite. Doesn't matter what nation, what color, what creed, or where you're from, God loves you just the same. He loves the Hindus. He loves those who are in that war at, at the moment's going on in Israel and, and all those on the other side who are fighting in Syria. But God still loves people. And many, even those who are fighting, are coming to Christ in places like Iran, all over the place, wherever you wouldn't expect in China, people are coming to Christ in the face of great persecution and they're finding that Jesus is alive. And many of them do lose their lives, just like it was back in the early days when people were burned at the stake. Latimer already said, my brother, play the man. When light a candle in the land and put it out you can. It was lit at the funeral fire that was Jehovah's plan. But God is for you. And through that persecution, multitudes came to Christ. So let's stand up and, yes, count the cost, but go through it, no matter what. In Jesus' name. Thank you for joining us. Please be in touch. We encourage you to respond to this program by post, telephone, email or via our website to obtain free copies of our Hope Builders, CCN News, prayer requests or to help support this ministry by praying or giving. Look us up on Facebook and watch more programs on our YouTube channel.